Hello, boys and girls. Happy Monday. It is time for our new read aloud this week, and it is a really cool story. Um, it's actually a folk tale and that we are going to re be reading about this week. But before we start, we always want to make sure that we review our vocabulary so that we know which words we're going to see within our story this week. So our first word is tumbling. This acrobat is tumbling through the air. So remember, you might know how to do a cartwheel or a backflip. You would be tumbling. You would be flipping. Number two is flung. So if you fling something, you're throwing something with a lot of force. So you might fling a bug outside. If you catch one in your house, you might fling it back outside. Number three is tangled. So those pieces of strings are tangled. Your hair might get tangled. Or if you're tying your shoelaces and they get all knotted up, that is tangled. Number four is empty. The pot is empty. There is nothing inside. So if something is empty, that is the opposite of full. So there's nothing inside. Maybe your toy box is empty. Maybe your backpack is empty. That means that there is nothing inside, boys and girls. Number five is swift. Swift horses move very fast. So maybe you are a swift runner. Maybe you move very swiftly. Number six is peacefully. The farm animals are sleeping peacefully. Nothing is bothering them. I hope you are sleeping peacefully at night because we don't want to be woken up by loud sounds like thunder or anything like that. So I hope you are sleeping peacefully. Number seven is stream. This stream flows into a larger river. So a stream is moving water, but it's usually quite small. So maybe we will see a stream in our story. And finally, we have the word blazed. A forest fire blazed or burned brightly for many hours. So blaze, that means it is burning very brightly. The fire might be blazing. It might be very hot. It might be very bright. And it might be very strong. So when we look at our vocabulary words, when we see them in our context, when we're reading our story, if we don't understand a word, remember we want to use context clues to help us figure it out. We can go back to this page and it gives us a visual and, a, and uses it in a sentence to help us understand. You can look it up in a dictionary. You can look it up online. So remember, if you don't understand a word, boys and girls, that's okay. We learn by finding this information out. We learn from looking things up and not knowing everything already. Miss Owen even still has to look up words to this day. So you never stop learning new vocabulary words. So we are going to see some of these words in our story today. And we are going to read a story called Half Chicken. And that's really interesting. I wonder why the author decided to call it Half Chicken. That seems a little bit silly, but I'm excited to read and find out. So Half Chicken is written by Alma Floreda, this lady up here, and she loves telling stories, boys and girls. So she actually heard this story from her grandma and she decided to get with the illustrator and tell it in her own way and make this children's book for us to read. And the illustrator's name is Kim Howard and she loves drawing pictures for children's books. She's done over 25 children's books and her pictures are usually very colorful and they're very vibrant. So I'm excited to see how the author and illustrator work together, work together to tell the story of the half chicken. And remember, before we start reading, we always want to think about the genre so we can set a purpose. And our genre this week is a folk tale. And a folk tale is a traditional tale. And usually people pass it down from generations to generations. The stories get told over and over and over again. And sometimes those stories might change a little bit. Sometimes different cultures might tweak it based on what they believe. So folk tales are really, really cool and that they get carried on from people that are older all the way to people that are small. And then when those small young people grow up, they tell those stories to their children. And that's how these traditional tales get passed down from generation to generation. So this is one of the stories that Alma, the author, thought was cool enough from her grandmother to turn it into her own children's story. 
So I think that's really cool. And a folk tale um, is usually something that teaches a character a lesson. It's something that they learn in life that either makes them a better person or it helps them to understand something else um, in life that will make them a better person. So who do you think our main character is in the story by looking at the cover? Who do you think our main character is if it's called Half Chicken? I think the chicken is our main character. So I wonder what he's going to learn in our story today, boys and girls. We're going to jump in, but before we do, let's look at our essential question. We always want to make sure we check that out. It says, why are some stories told over and over again? So let's find out why she called it half chicken and let's figure out why this story is told over and over again. Let's see how it affects our day-to-day -day life right now. And remember, boys and girls, when we have these read-alouds, don't forget that you can always mute Miss Owen and practice your fluency reading all by yourself. Have you ever seen a weather vane? Do you know why there's a little rooster on one end spinning around to let us know which way the wind is blowing? Well, I'll tell you. It's an old, old story that my grandmother once told me. And before that, her grandmother told it to her. It goes like this. A long, long time ago on a Mexican ranch, a mother hen was sitting on her eggs. One by one, the baby chicks began to hatch, leaving their empty shells behind. One, two, three, four, twelve chicks had hatched but the last egg still had not cracked open. The hen did not know what to do. The chicks were running here and there, and she could not chase after them because she was still sitting on the last egg. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, why is that hen still sitting on that egg? because it has, hasn't hatched yet, you're right. So all these eggs are hatching, except for the very last one. Hmm, I wonder why, and I wonder how the mama hen is feeling watching all of her other chicks run around. I bet she's a little bit worried. She probably wants to be with her chicks, but she has to stay on this egg so that it can finally hatch. So we're talking about real hens right now, but at the beginning of the story, the introduction from the author, she was talking about this, and this is not a real chicken. What did she call this, boys and girls? A weather vane, remember? So a weather vane is something that we use right now. Some people have them at the top of their house. Some farmers have them on top of their barns. And what it does is it spins and it moves. So it tells us which direction the wind is blowing. So this is our weather vane. And the, this is our story. This is the beginning of our story with our real hen. Finally, there was a tiny sound. The baby chick was pecking at its egg from the inside. The hen quickly helped it break open the shell, and at last the thirteenth chick came out into the world. Yet this was no ordinary chick. He had only one wing, only one leg, only one eye, and only half as many feathers as the other chick. Hmm. So the last egg finally hatched, but what was different about this egg? This egg didn't look like any of the other chicks. And the author does a really good job of explaining it using her words. So she's describing it. She says, it only has one wing and one leg, one eye, and only half as many feathers, half, there's half in the chicken. Oh, that's the title of our story, boys and girls, half chicken. So I wonder if this egg and this chick that just hatched, because he only has half of everything else, I wonder if that's our main character. Hmm, let's keep reading to find out. 
it was not long before everyone at the ranch knew that a very special chick had been born. The ducks told the turkeys, the turkeys told the pigeons, the pigeons told the swallows, and the swallows flew over the fields, spreading the news to the cows, grazing peacefully with their calves, the fierce bulls, and the swift horses. So everybody around in that town, all the animals, heard about this different chick and they're telling each other and they're running around and they're spreading the news that this chick is a little bit different. Soon the hen was surrounded by animals who wanted to see the strange chick. One of the ducks said, but he only has one wing. And one of the turkeys added, why, He's only a half chicken. From then on, everyone called him half chicken. And half chicken, finding himself at the center of all of this attention, became very vain. So boys and girls, if you're not sure what vain means, that means that you have a lot of confidence. You might think that you look really pretty or you might think that you're super cool and you want everybody to look at you and give you attention. And that's not very good to be vain because then it might make think it might make other people think that you're not very nice, that you think very highly of yourself. So, it's kind of funny that the author used that word vain. Because vain, V-A-I-N, that we just saw in our story, is spelled differently than the weather vane, V-A-N-E. So I wonder if the author did that on purpose. We have vain, V-A-N-E, weather vane, and then we have vain, V-A-I-N, meaning that this chick has all these animals looking at him and he's feeling really cool. He said, I'm so different. I'm unique. So he's getting, it's getting to his head. He's being a little bit vain. One day he overheard the swallows who traveled a great deal talking about him. Not even at the court of the Viceroy in Mexico City is there anyone so unique. Then Half Chicken decided that it was time for him to leave the ranch. Early one morning, he said his farewells, announcing, Goodbye, goodbye, I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. So why did Half Chicken leave the ranch? Why did he want to leave? The Half Chick wanted to leave because he heard these birds talking about him and they were saying, wow, I've never seen someone look so unique. All the way in Mexico City at the Viceroy, there aren't even people as unique as him. So the, the chicken wanted to leave the ranch and go all the way to Mexico City so he could see for himself. And I think that the author and the illustrator are doing a really, really good job working together to give us a visual picture um, of how everything's going right now. We look at all of her illustrations that she's doing. It's very colorful. It's showing him leaving the ranch. So I think we're getting some good vis visualizations from the author and from the illustrator. Half Chicken had not walked very far when he found a stream whose waters were blocked by some branches. Good morning, Half Chicken. Would you please move the branches that are blocking my way? Asked the stream. Half Chicken moved the branches aside but when the stream suggested that he stay a while and take a swim, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. So who did he just help, boys and girls? The stream, the water asked him to please move the branches so that they could, because they were in his way. 
A little while later, Half Chicken found a small fire burning between some rocks. The fire was almost out. Good morning, Half Chicken. Please fan me a little with your wing, for I am about to go out, asked the fire. Half Chicken fanned the fire with his wing, and it blazed up again. But when the fire suggested that he stay a while and warm up, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. So who did he help on this page, boys and girls? The fire, and what was the problem? The fire was about to go out and we need fire to stay warm. So if you, if you wave fire, it gets some oxygen and it will help the fire go ablaze again. So the chicken helped the stream and the chicken helped the fire. So he sounds like a pretty good chicken to me. After he had walked a little farther, half chicken found the wind tangled in some bushes. Good morning, half chicken. Would you please untangle me so that I can go on my way? Asked the wind. Half chicken untangled the branches, but when the wind suggested that he stay and play and offered to help him fly here and there like a dry leaf, he answered, I have no time to lose. I'm off to Mexico City to see the court of the Viceroy. And hip hop, hip hop, off he went, hippity hopping along on his only foot. At last he reached Mexico City. So boys and girls, there were three things that the half chicken helped. He helped the stream, he helped the fire, and he helped the wind. Hmm. Water, fire, and wind. The author is acting like these are people, but are fire, wind, and water people? No. So it sounds like the author is using this in the genre with the folktale. They make animals and different forces of nature and objects act like real people to tell the story. So I think that's pretty cool that the half chicken is helping all of these pieces of mother nature. Okay, half chicken crossed the enormous great plaza. He passed the stalls laden with meat, fish, vegetables, fruit, cheese, and honey. He passed the Parian, the market where all kinds of beautiful goods were sold. Finally, he reached the gate of the Viceroy's palace. So it seems like Half Chicken has traveled quite a distance when the author said, at last he reached Mexico City. And he's been saying over and over and over again how he can't waste any time because he's on the way to the Viceroy. And so if you're not familiar what a vi Viceroy is, remember we can use context clues. So they're going somewhere where people are unique. They're going past a plaza, so maybe they're in a town. And it says that they're getting to the gate of the Viceroy's palace. So it sounds like this person might be rich. They might have a lot of money. They might have a lot of nice things. So let's find out what happens. Good afternoon, said Half Chicken to the guards in fancy uniforms who stood in front of the palace. I've come to see the Viceroy. One of the guards began to laugh. The other one said, you'd better go in around the back and through the kitchen. So Half Chicken went, hip hop, hip hop, around the palace and to the kitchen door. So where are the guards sending Half Chicken? Where did they tell him to go? To the kitchen. <gasps> uh oh. Do you think that's a good idea for a chicken to go to a kitchen? Uh-oh, let's find out what happens. 
The cook who saw him said, what luck! This chicken is just what I need to make a soup for the viscerine. And he threw half chicken into a kettle of water that was sitting on the fire. When half chicken felt how hot the water was, he said, oh fire, help me, please don't burn me. So what happened to the chicken? He got thrown into a boiling pot of water so that the chef could cook the chicken. Oh no, that is not what half chicken came to the viceroy for. The fire answered, you helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. Ask the water to jump on me and put me out. Then half chicken asked the water, Oh water, please help me. Please jump on the fire and put him out so he won't burn me. And the water answered, You helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. And he jumped on the fire and put him out. Oh my goodness. When the cook returned, he saw that the water had spilled and the fire was out. This chicken has been more trouble than he's worth, explained the, exclaimed the cook. Besides, one of the ladies in waiting just told me that the viscerine doesn't want any soup. She wants to eat nothing but salad and he picked half chicken up by his only leg and flung him out the window. Oh my goodness, why did the cook fling half chicken out the window? The cook was so angry, the chicken spilled his water all over his kitchen, his fire is burned out, and now he was told that after he worked so hard to make chicken soup, the viscerine said, no, I just want salad. So I think the cook was a little bit frustrated and threw half chicken out the window. But that's good news for the chicken because now he won't get eaten. When half chicken was tumbling through the air, he called out, Oh, wind, help me, please. And the wind answered, You helped me when I needed help. Now it's my turn to help you. And the wind blew fiercely. He lifted half chicken higher and higher until the little rooster landed on one of the towers of the palace. So how did the rooster, how did the half chicken get all the way on the roof like that? Who took him up there? The wind, yep. So he's up there and he kind of looks like the weather vane at the beginning of our story. Hmm. From there, you can see everything you want, half chicken, with no danger of ending up in the cooking pot. And from that day on, Weathercocks have stood on their only leg, seeing everything that happens below and pointing whichever way their friend the wind blows. So the wind pushed the half chicken to the top of the palace and told him, okay chicken, if you stay up here, then people won't try to eat you. And our weather vanes, funny enough that we use, actually are only half of a chicken or a rooster as well. Because on a real weather vane, you have to only have half so that when the wind blows, it will turn it to tell you which direction that it flows. So boys and girls, there is actually a way that you can make your own weather vane at the house. And Miss Owen was going to make it for you today, but I was missing some of my materials. And remember when we're doing online learning, it's okay if we don't have everything, but if we do have things, then it is excellent practice, ex a very good extension activity for you to do at the house. So if you have the materials that I'm about to show you, then I will, let me see. If you can, I will share my, um, I will share the link to 
a um, link to show you how to make a weather vane at home. So if you have a container and you have some Play-Doh and a straw and some paper and a push pin or a needle, that's what Miss Owen was missing. But if you have all of those materials, you can make your own weather vane and you can set it outside. And when the wind blows, your arrow will move and it will tell you which cardinal direction the wind is blowing that day, which I think is pretty cool. So if we think back to our essential question, which was, why do you think some stories are told over and over again? I think that the author wanted to tell this story because some people might wonder where weather vanes even came from. I didn't know where weather vanes came from, and that might be a made up story that somebody created about the weather vane, but I think it's pretty cool for the rooster to know that even though he's different, he was useful, and now people use things like that to tell the wind and the weather all the time. So I think that's a pretty good story, boys and girls, and if you want to make the weather vane, make sure you check out the link underneath this video on my website. If you're looking at the White Station YouTube page, and you don't see it, um, it'll be in the description box of this YouTube video, or you can find it on my website, which is owenhip.weebly.com. So it's O W E N H I P.weebly.com. And you can also find the link there. So if you want to make a weather vane, boys and girls, that will be awesome. And if you do, make sure that you share your pictures with us at White Station so we can see how your distance learning is going. All right, boys and girls, I will see you next Monday for a new story. Have a good day.